Hey everybody, my name is Jesse from Scrap Metal Made. On the last episode of my Forester truck conversion, I made the structure for my bed tray. I got my tailgate to hinge, and I worked on starting to clean up the bodywork. In this episode, we're going to jump in and do some more serious bodywork, and we'll see how far it gets. Stay tuned. So one of the good things about welding up doors is there's so many bends in the metal that even in this thin modern sheet metal, just spread out the tacks and grind her back down. So I had to use my body as a human shield to kind of get the wind. It's so windy right now that that was the only option because I couldn't weld. I was just waiting for the wind to die down and I'd weld the spot. But yeah, that worked and I'm getting pretty close so I'm probably going to do that. I might try to film from the other direction but the sun is like kind of the worst angle right now so maybe the other side um, to get a better view. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going on this guy. So once I had the bodywork pretty much metal finished how I wanted it, it was time for the bondo. I've done bondo over primer before, but this time I decided to go right over the bare metal. Alright, so the first thing I did this morning was I got the bondo going on the side. And yesterday, I didn't really film this process because I had my girlfriend helping me out. But she kind of made cardboard templates for all the pieces that are going to make up the tray on this. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the middle one and just kind of start making all these pieces um, that are going to bolt in place. I got these black metal shells from an REI that was upgrading their shelves. So they put them on Craigslist free and uh, me and a bunch of other metal workers went and grabbed them. So after the Bondo had some time to cure, I switched gears from the bed tray back to the bodywork. I'm a big fan of using the block with the adhesive backed rolls for this. Um, it is a little expensive to get into that system, but if you buy the long adhesive back sandpaper rolls online, it's really not as expensive as you might think. And it really enables you to do a lot of work. Things like the, the accent line that's in the bodywork is hard to do with that, but um, for the flat stuff, this works great.
So I've been working on the body on this guy for three, basically all week. Um, just kind of after work. You know, this stuff, it takes a while to do. Body work in particular takes way longer than you think it will. Um, you know, I'm a lot happier with this side than I am on that side because that side needed a little bit more body work than I really would like to put on, but I think it'll be okay. Um, I took my time, it's smoothed in, you know, with the block, so it's nice and smooth. Um, the weather's rolling in though, so I want to make sure to get some primer on it. So I kind of hustled and put a few coats on tonight. It's not perfect, but it's a good start so I can kind of work on something else and come back to this. Like I know there's some hail damage on the hood, so I'm going to do some more body work kind of later on. Also the top of the cab, and then put all that metal work around. Take these off. I kind of marked the edges, so I need to mark the front edge. So, uh, but I'm going to put these mounts in four corners to get these situated, and then I can make all the other panels kind of based off of this uh, kind of center line, so that everything matches up. So one thing I'll mention, which seems obvious to me, but I'll say it anyways, is that if you were to use one continuous piece welded together, it would be a lot more water resistant but I wanted removable panels that add seams just for serviceability, at least on this build. Um, I am gonna kind of upgrade this in the future and have less um, removable panels, so there's less seams in places where water can get underneath the uh, tray. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm using a washer to space the tab slightly below the frame structure so that there's room for the flange on the rivnut nut so that the panels can rest on the frame of the tray. After I got the center panels bolted in, it was time to make the side panels. Here I decided to pre-drill my holes in my panel so I could come back and mark it on the body for my rib nuts. Alright, so I got this piece right here, all cut out. It's not perfect, but I think I made carved it into shape, so I kind of I bent this little L right here so it matches this little bend right here. I kind of like just kind of bent it with my hands a little bit. I'm gonna weld this piece in, and that's gonna give me a chance to make a better template for the piece that's gonna cover this area here. Because once I get this welded in, 
but kind of be able to form this and shape a little bit more and make this exactly the shape I want. I was able to kind of bend this area around to kind of match the pinch wall in here. It looks really good. So I took the back side, kind of uh, ground a little slot in there, kind of just bent it over. And I also cut these relief tabs so that this could still do the um, kind of arc to match the, the tailgate. I had to massage my sheet metal panel a few times with the hammer, but she turned out pretty good. Alright, so there she is in all her glory. See, I gotta fill a pretty significant gap right there, but that's fine. So because I was welding these panels together, I wanted to bolt the forward piece to the inside of the bed so that when I weld the metal piece together to make them all one piece, it stays in place. Alright, so that's about it for the driver's side. And I'm not going to bore you with what I did on the passenger side because it's the exact same thing. It just happened a lot smoother because I knew exactly what to do. Alright, so the last thing I'm doing for tonight is I got these inserts because this area right here isn't going to have a removable panel. Luckily I tested the other side as well and this side fits in pretty perfect on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and grind this area out, cut out two of these. Um, on the back side I'm going to spray some, spray some uh, weld through primer so it doesn't rust on the underside and then I can go ahead and weld this in. So I got this guy right here all smoothed out as much as I can in metal. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the body filler stage. Feeling pretty good. Run my hand across it. There is kind of a ridge here, but it actually end up being a low spot. So it'll be kind of a little valley in the seam right here. But overall, it could turn out really good. It's going to be sick. So overall, I'm really happy with how a lot of the lines in this truck came out. One thing I'm not too happy about is the top of the rear door. It's kind of like a weird body line. And so what I'm gonna do is take some flat bar and kind of make that a much better line. I'm actually okay with the area kind of past the door. Kind of has an interesting sweep to it. Um, I think in person it looks pretty good. Once it gets smoothed out, that'll look nice. But the front area looks a little too crazy, so I'm gonna clean that up.
right, so now that I'm waiting for that Bondo to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I got a little corner patch that needs a little bit of fill on this panel right here. I'm also gonna start welding in these side panels. So right now this is just bolted to the side wall of the truck and this is bolted to the floor. Now that they're all secured, um, I'm gonna weld them together. things I'm really focusing on this truck is water intrusion. So right in there, you can see I drew a little hole so that water can escape because it's going to be almost impossible to actually get this whole thing to be completely waterproof. So up there, I also drilled a little hole with a little fin to divert the water. I'm just going to kind of keep anywhere I see an area. There's also one in the spare tire kind of depression there. So anywhere water can collect, hopefully I have a solution for draining it out. I'm also going to do the other side in that little well area as well. Here I'm just welding up little holes in the sheet metal. This is probably not the best way to do it um, if you want it to look super professional, but I mean this is a work truck so honestly the inside of the bed, I don't really care what it looks like. Um, I just want it to be functional and not have you know gaping holes where water is going to intrude in. So here you can see me buttoning up and smoothing out the left side panel. I basically did a copy paste on the right side. Alright, so one of the things that's going to make this look a lot cleaner is I took off the roof rack rails on this guy and I was figuring out how I think Subaru might make um, flush rails. but. I wasn't clear if the ones I found online were for the next generation Subaru or for this one. And also, just kind of expensive. I think they were like 150 bucks for the set. And shipping, uh, maybe I'd have to get a Subaru dealer to order it. Um, but I think I can make these out of metal. My girlfriend actually suggested it. It's just a metal strip and then I'll have to put some sort of a uh, grommet set up uh, underneath so it doesn't just trap water down there. I got my factory roof right here. I'm gonna kind of set this down so that I can trace it out, and that'll give me a good starting point. Alright, so I got this guy pretty close. I'm really liking that line right there. You never see. Just kind of adds another body line to the whole thing, which is pretty cool. I need to add a little bit on the back end there. Um, and also, this front is being kept up because of that clip right there. So I'm going to cut that clip down. Um, yeah, this is going to be super flush. It's going to look really nice. So just trace this shape out. This right here is uh, part of an old light fixture. So scrap metal made. All right, I think that's pretty good. Imagine that piece being black. Looks nice compared to that. I mean, that doesn't look terrible. It looks kind of interesting. But there's a lot of body work that needs to be done if I'm going to do that. And if I make it all black, it's going to blend in with this guy right here. It'll look nice. I think rather than welding in those holes, since I'm gonna be epoxying this guy in anyways, I might as well just epoxy these holes. There's gonna be a lot of waterproofing going on, so I think like just JB Weld probably 
is what I'll use for that. You just put a piece of tape underneath and just fill the hole with JB Weld. So I just couldn't make this first piece work. I tried to trim it a few times, but it just wasn't quite the right shape, so I just went ahead and marked it up and made a new one. All right, so I got another piece cut out. This is actually from one of the hatches used to build this thing. And, you know, it, take, it takes a lot of finesse to get all these curves just right. I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna use the uh, old hole locations for just kind of a reference. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this time the center line. So I measure the width and get the center every time. Thirty-eight point seven. See, thirty-eight divided by two is nineteen. Nineteen plus. So this guy right here kind of sticks up a, a little bit. Um, so we'll probably do a little bit more trimming on that. And then when I put the center guy in here, it actually kind of bows it down a little bit. Not well, you can see that, but I think it's gonna look really good once I get button heads that are long enough. These guys right here are longer, so I'm using those just for mock-up. Yeah, I like it. Imagine that being black. It's gonna look good. So yesterday was kind of a bum day for car stuff. So you can see that I got some pretty significant damage to this carport. Um, let's see, oh, you can see that, but pretty mangled. It's impressive how well it broke. I haven't really been covering this just because I really just need a place where I can paint the Forester. And I, what I did was I combined two of the $100 carports and it just really didn't work out very well. Um, it collapsed on the Forester truck yesterday and got pretty lucky, I think. I haven't spotted any damage besides um, right here. You can see there's a pretty significant dent. It kind of popped this plastic piece out. So, just, I need a way to paint this thing. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do everything I can right now, kind of while behind the scenes, I'm trying to solve that issue with how to paint this thing. Really, right now, there's, I just don't have a solution. So, I'm just gonna kind of get this thing completed. You know, it might have to end up being primer if I can't find a good solution. So I'm just gonna keep on trucking and uh, see if we can get some awesome stuff done in this thing. So stay tuned. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I'm sorry I didn't get quite to the paint stage in this video. I'm gonna say a lot of kind of weird stuff happened at this point of the build. I live on a really windy hill, so the tent endeavor was just a total nightmare that I'm not gonna bore you with, but I do not wish to relive it. And I would say it didn't work very well as an ad hoc paint booth because it's just on the ground, so dust is kicking up. It was, it was kind of a nightmare. In any case, I'm definitely going to have the truck in one color on the next episode, so here's a sneak peek of what that looks like. I'm just going to keep diving into this editing stuff and try to keep it as concise as possible and entertaining, so 
Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.